story that about interpretation. You know, four people could witness the same car accident and walk away with four completely different stories about what happened, whose fault it was, and why it happened. And so the same is true. The same is true with apocalyptic literature as well, and certainly the prophecies that are mentioned in, in the Word of God. Daniel saw it one way, and John saw it another. And so we can see the similarities, but we can also see the differences. That doesn't mean there's a contradiction in God's Word. It just simply means they saw different things, and they focused on different things for their time and for their people. <laughs> right. Yeah, you have three boys. <laughs> Exactly, when it's in three different stories. Mm -hmm. Right, so as parents, you know, you, you kind of have to sift through. <laughs> There's uh, different stories about who stole the cookie from the cookie jar, you know? Yeah. So uh, that's just kind of what, what's happening here. And so uh, I'll, I'll try to give, um, next month, I'll try to give you a chart that shows you what the prophecies in the book of Daniel and the prophecies in the book of Revelation and how they kind of coexist and um, are basically the same prophecy, but uh, they see it through different eyes. And it's just kind of interesting to look at. Um, the history, um, I'm not going to go too too far into this, too long, because we've, we've studied this before. It's the same historical setting as Ezekiel and Jeremiah and Isaiah. It's all during this time where God is pronouncing judgment upon the people of Jerusalem, upon the people of Israel, because of their main issue was idolatry. Because they had worshipped other gods, God was going to punish them because they were set apart to be his people. He had set them apart. He had it singled them out, basically. Of all the people groups in the world, he had, he had chosen these people to serve him and to worship him. And he had called them in Ezekiel, or Exodus, rather, uh, chapter... 19, I believe it is, to be a light to the nations. And <clears throat> so they were a beacon of hope to the rest of the world. How God acted and interacted with Israel was to be a reflection of how He wanted to interact with everybody else. And so when Israel walked away from Him and they rejected Him and they worshipped other peoples, that is not what God intended. That's not what God wanted. And therefore, he had to correct that and get that back on track. And so, you know, when, when things, when people groups as Israel was set apart for God's holy purpose, and when they transgressed that purpose and tried to go outside of it, there was some problems with that. And, and God had to make restitution. God had to fix that, that issue. And we see him do that through the destruction of Jerusalem and their exile and various and sundry things in an effort to restore them and to bring them back to their original purpose. Now, I say all that to say <coughs> we have been called out. We have been set apart. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 tells us that we're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, who have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light, why that we should show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness. And so, you know, when, when we are, you know, living our lives or doing our thing, God has called us out and he has separated us. And if we try to live as if he has not called us out or he has not set us apart for a certain purpose, then there are... Some there's repentance that needs to happen on our part, and then there's kind of a there's kind of a gathering back in <coughs> that God needs. He kind of needs to reorient our thinking, <coughs> which is what He's having to do with the Israelites during this time, because they were called for a separate purpose. They were called for a specific purpose, and we are as well. And so we have to remember, you know what? My life is not my own. I'm bought with a price. God purchased me. He loves me so much that He died and He purchased me and purchase my salvation and it, I can't just live any old way that I want to because he's called me and he has chosen me and if he's asking something of me then I'm going to be willing to give that no matter what it is because I am called out I, I am called to be a, a light to the nations so we as Israel did 
we also serve the purpose of how God interacts with us and how he moves in our lives is how he wants to interact with everybody else as well. And so we have to keep ourselves focused on him the way that Daniel and his three friends did. We have to keep ourselves true to him and faithful to him and his word so that <clears throat> it's an example to everybody else of how God can, will, and wants to work in the life of an individual. So our lives aren't our own. We may want to live and just do whatever we want to do and live however we want to live, but we, we really can't. We've been called out for a specific purpose, and we have to live true to that purpose. We have to live according to His Word and what He wants done. <clears throat> Again, Israel had gone uh, to idolatry and they had practiced wicked, wicked things. In the book of Ezekiel, I believe I pointed out that even in the temple where there was to be worship of God, there was to be sacrifice of animals, you know, the holy of holies and all that, they had written on the walls Egyptian gods. They had drawn these things. They had brought idols into the temple. They had desecrated their worship. And, and God was not pleased. He was not pleased. And so because of their sin... Um, the people of Israel who had given themselves to idolatry were carried off captive to Babylon, which was basically the center of idolatry. They had multiple gods. Um, and it was one of the most wicked cities in the ancient world. It is uh, significant that after the Babylonian captivity, idolatry never again became a major temptation to Israel. So God knew what He was doing. He, fi he fixed them, <laughs> essentially. And um, it's just, to me, it's, it's so beautiful what Daniel represents. That in the midst of an idolatrous generation, his own people, Israel, an idolatrous generation, he was carried away captive into an idolatrous city. Here's a man that says, I'm not going to eat that food. I'm not going to bow to that image. I'm not going to pray to this king. He was, he, he was rare. In the nation of Israel. Now he wasn't the only one that didn't worship idols. I'm sure there were others. Ezekiel would stand as one. Isaiah, Jeremiah, of course. And others. Many others. But the majority of the Israelite population had bowed. And here's Daniel and his three friends saying, No, that's that may be my family. That may be where I came from. And I may be surrounded by that. But that's not who I am. So he wasn't defined even by his family. Maybe his family had participated in idolatry. I don't know. But definitely his people, his culture had. And then where he was physically in Babylon, they did. But he said, you know what, I'm not defined by people. I'm not defined by my culture. I'm defined by God and by God alone. He is my judge, and I'm going to live in accordance with him. Daniel is such a powerful picture of what we can and should be in our world today. Maybe we didn't come from the right family. Maybe we didn't come from a saved family. Maybe we didn't come from a, a family of preachers. Maybe our family is full of ancestors uh, that were uh, immoral and drunkards and uh, in other ways immoral. Maybe that's our family history. Maybe that's the people you're surrounded by on a daily basis at work or in your neighborhoods, in your communities. But that doesn't have to define you. You can, and you are a child of God, and you can live as a child of God, even in the midst of all of that. Daniel's a perfect example of that. And bringing it back to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, we're called out of darkness into a marvelous Light. And so you stand as an example in your family, perhaps of imperfect people, uh, maybe immoral people. Maybe they're good people, but they don't live good and right lives. Or maybe they're just really messed up. That happens as well. But you have been called out and you have been saved and you are a child of God and he has set you in that place. And you are a beacon of hope and of love and of righteousness. And so Daniel is a beautiful, beautiful picture of you don't have to have the right cultural setting. You don't have to have the right family. You don't have to do any of that. You, God has called you and he has commissioned you. And his love for you 
<coughs> and you can stand firm and you can stand fast in what you believe and God will stand with you. And so I'm thankful for the book of Daniel today. I absolutely love it. going to enjoy digging into it more next month. But I want us just to close in prayer. Just thank the Lord um, for, number one, for the example of Daniel, but then thank Him that He has called us and that He has placed us and that He has equipped us. Can we pray together this morning? God, we are so thankful for Your Word and thankful for what You have done for us, that You have called us out of darkness. You have called us into marvelous light, and we do want to show forth Your praise today in every situation, in our family situations and even in our culture, the things that surround us currently. We want to be, as Daniel example to us, faithful to you, faithful to your word, faithful in our commitment and our convictions to you, so that we shine as a great light to those who are around us. Help us today to be faithful to what we know. Help us, I pray, not to give in to temptation to, to release our convictions or to let down on our moral standard, but I pray that we would continue to uphold that, even though there are political things that may come against us, and even though there are family things that may come against us or cultural things that may come against us. Keep us strong in what we know and in what we believe and help us to live by those principles. In the name of Jesus, bless us today, I pray, in our studies. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Any other